Jesus asked them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went back and fell on the ground. Jesus was bold like a lion. And Jesus is the gold standard of Christianity. And if you claim to be a child of God, you have to be bold like a lion. And you know what they say about lions. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. For you to become everything God has intended for you to become, to reach the heights God has planned for you, it demands boldness. It demands boldness to be a child of God. It demands boldness to walk by faith and not by sight, to go where you've never walked before. It demands boldness to reach for what you've never reached for before. It demands boldness to win. It demands boldness to break chains. It demands boldness to fight when you're tired. It demands boldness to be above average. It demands boldness to be more than a conqueror. Boldness, boldness, boldness. I don't think you understand me. The door is open to those bold enough to knock. It says in the word of God, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. In a society where we have access to many religions, how do we decide which one to follow? Well, I only know one way of deciding which of anything to believe is on the basis of evidence. You see, there's a confusion about faith. Many people have accepted Dawkins' definition of faith as believing where there's no evidence. That's nonsense. Faith is an ordinary word. It's not just a religious word. It's an ordinary word. It means trust. And usually, I suspect that all of you, you don't trust either facts or people without having evidence, or else you're a bit silly. And your bank manager won't trust you with a loan unless you provide evidence of collateral. Isn't that true? We all know what evidence-based faith is. Come on, y'all. Use your mind. Open it. Like, really think about this. Really think of, that's why I say, I can look at spirituality and know how it is forsaking the Lord by knowing the Bible. By knowing Satan tricks. By knowing Satan schemes. By knowing the Lord. It says the fear of the Lord um, comes wisdom. The first thing when it comes to wisdom and understanding is first fearing the Lord. And that literally, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, it will come to you. For the Lord is gracious when it comes to wisdom. Anybody that asks for wisdom and understanding, the Lord shall give it. And when you start really asking for wisdom and understanding, how I'm putting two and two together, like the beginning message of the scripture, putting the pieces and the puzzles together, right here, you'll be able to do it. Somehow compensate for my lack of strength. I can prove it. My goal was to work myself relentlessly every day until I mastered something, and it worked. My counterpunch is the result. Oh. What's up, you all? Welcome to Catching Puzzle Pieces. New insights, new revelations. Experiencing more light bulb moments through our life, through the journey of our day, of our week, of our month. You take your time getting to know people. You don't just dive headfirst into relationships or jump into constant chats with someone new. You believe that relationships should grow naturally, not be rushed just because you happen to work at the same place. Like, seriously, just because we share a workspace doesn't mean we need to be best buds. You've got this sharp sense of discernment. You can read people's vibes and sense their intentions from the jump. Sometimes, just from a short convo, you know if you should keep your distance or keep things brief because something about them feels off. This ability to discern is a gift. You can pick up on these vibes and make solid judgments about people. They have no clue how you do it. They're puzzled by how you can see right through their intentions. But it's because you're in tune with something deeper. You're guided by a spiritual insight that they just don't have access to. They don't get that your intuition is powered by the Holy Spirit, giving you an edge they can't match. 
You've got the Holy Spirit giving you this incredible gift of discernment. It's like a superpower that lets you see through people's facades. You can spot someone with bad intentions from a mile away. They might smile in your face, but you can sense that something's off and you know not to trust them. They have no idea how you do it, and it drives them nuts because they can't figure you out. It's like they're frustrated because they can't control or predict you. Here's the thing, you're nice, but you're also real. People often mistake niceness for weakness, thinking you're ignorant or naive, but you're far from that. You're kind, yes, but you're also capable of being direct and assertive. When needed, you can put someone in their place without losing your cool. This balance confuses them because they can't pin you down as either purely nice or purely mean. Your personality is like a complex puzzle to them. They can't decide if you're sweet or tough, quiet or outspoken. You've got layers and they don't know which angle to approach you from. Are you confident or reserved? Are you quiet or commanding? The truth is, you're all of these things. As a child of God, you embody a full spectrum of traits that make you a well-rounded and dynamic person. You're confident even when you're an outcast. You're self-assured in your silence, and when you speak, you command attention. You're everything all at once, and that's something they can't comprehend. They don't understand the gift, the spirit, that you're operating with. You're not one to broadcast all your business either, which only adds to their confusion. They see someone who's confident, layered, and authentically themselves, and it unsettles them. They can't figure out what makes you tick, and it frustrates them because they don't have the same level of discernment or spiritual insight. You're out here being your multi-dimensional awesome self, and they just can't handle it. You don't go around spilling all your personal stuff because it's not up to anyone else to decide what's best for you. You know you've got God on your side, and when things get tough, you can drop to your knees and pray for guidance. You get your direction straight from the source, so there's no need to air out your troubles to everyone. You figured out that sharing your life's details with just anyone only gives them ammo to gossip. You know that God's got your back, so instead of chatting about your problems with people who might just spread rumors, you take everything to God in prayer. You trust that He will handle your issues, and you have faith in that process. You're not one to sit around the table and lay out every part of your life just so folks can go off and talk about you behind your back. You understand that there's no point in giving people the scoop on your life when they can't really do anything to help you anyway. So you keep your business to yourself and let God handle it. You have a quiet confidence in your faith, knowing that your Saviour has got you covered. This leaves others scratching their heads, wondering about you because they don't know your story. They're baffled because you don't share everything, and it makes them realize just how little they actually know about you. They see someone who's secure in their faith, who doesn't need to broadcast their problems or seek validation from others. It's clear that you trust in God to sort out your affairs, and that confidence sets you apart. They're left in the dark, trying to piece together who you are, because you wisely choose to keep your personal life between you and the Lord. They don't come around here sharing all their business like we do, and because of that, they're left saying, I don't know anything about them. Well, that's exactly how it should be. You only know what you need to know. Think about when Jesus walked the earth. People couldn't figure him out either. They questioned him, calling him everything but who he truly was. Was he the Messiah, a prophet, a teacher? They couldn't accept the truth of his identity. You're a child of God, and when you invited the Holy Spirit into your life, asking to be more like Jesus, that's exactly what happened. God allowed you to face trials and tribulations, to go through persecution and affliction, to shape your character to be more like His. This journey molded you to navigate life just as Jesus did. When you accepted Him, you started to reflect His qualities more and more. Jesus was misunderstood, outcast, and a mystery to many because of His divine power, and you too possess that same power. The power granted to you by Christ enables you to do all things through Him who gives you strength. This includes accessing spiritual gifts like discernment, 
and other blessings from the Lord. This divine power is what set. I hope you are doing well. Uh, let's see. Help me, Father God, help me. Father God, help me, Holy Spirit, with my mind. Thank you, Lord. This is why I keep telling you, if it wasn't for Father God, the Holy Spirit, this isn't me. This is the Holy Spirit, all right? So, that's why I give the glory to Father God. I'm never proud of anything that I do. I am grateful and appreciative to the Lord for giving me my manna, uh, just like he did for the Egyptians. That was a puzzle piece I caught right there. Each puzzle piece is manna. It's like manna that Father God gives us. Right here, I'm making a video here because I found this sister in Christ. She shared something that were that had me super confused in life. It was like, okay, Lord, you want me to be kind to people, to be the way that you know the Lord was, but and I already knew of the verse, do not cast pearls upon swine because they will because they won't value it right i already knew about that verse but here my sister in christ is going to share another verse that which is a puzzle piece and you insight that i caught there's like oh okay so now I, I must run that new puzzle piece through my mind we if this is resonates with you too uh and that's how we do battle with the enemy because once we understand it's like oh, okay so now i'm gonna take off my rose colored glasses and and so i've been doing the right thing with these narcissistic individuals right that i run into uh once more i have no hate nothing towards these individuals the people that i run into we have to be discern discerning right and i learned and this is why i'm making a video with this from this sister in Christ because she explains it like I said better than I do she has her own experiences and this is confirmation that Father God is ordering my steps leading me on my path to the right because it's like I don't know what do I I already have my plan what I need to do right go to work do this this and that create a video out of something that inspires me or a confirmation and then I can share it with you all. And that way it's not like I'm just making this up, right? But uh, this is confirmation from Father God. So I'm just going to, while I eat, we're just going to listen and, and learn from my sister in Christ here. And uh, yeah, because this is my lunch. I mean, my first break. So we may we we're not gonna be able to go through the whole video, but I'll probably do some make uh do it in parts. So I wanted to talk today about how being nice or trying to be a nice person can put you in a situation where you are vulnerable to a narcissistic or other toxic, manipulative, exploitative person. Um, and we see this a lot, especially in the church. Um, oftentimes, as Christians, we're taught to be. Um, nice and there's almost it's almost gotten to the point where Christianity is associated with being a nice person um, but the truth is that we're not supposed to just treat everybody the same and just to always give everyone the benefit of the doubt um, mm -hmm. and just to continue mm -hmm. to give and to give and to give to people who are exploiting us or trying to manipulate us or use us in some way. So we're gonna be talking about that today so we can just get a little more freedom as far as that goes. Um, like I said, um, sometimes the Bible and Christianity can be misused to make you feel like you really have to just give everything to someone without any consideration for um, whether that person um, is toxic or whether they truly um, value you or um, deserve to have the best of you and deserve to be close to you um, the bible has you know really does make it clear um, that we aren't to treat everyone the same and that we are to be aware that not everyone is a nice person and that we can't just um, take take the best of what we have and give it to just anyone. 
Um, you know, oftentimes we hear it quoted, um, judge not that ye be not judged. And that's one of the main scriptures that people use when um, they're talking about whether we should even be aware of or um, learn about things like um, narcissism or talk about people who are toxic or harmful to others. There's some in the body of Christ who think that we're supposed to just treat everybody the same um, and just have, you know, see, almost have like rose colored glasses on where we think the best of everyone and we just right see the best in no everyone. Um, but the thing is, no more in Jesus name. I take these rose colored glasses off now from this day forth in Jesus name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for ordering my steps, for leading me to this video, to this sister in Christ, Father God, to discovering this channel. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for confirmation. Thank you, Lord. I pray that this helps whomever it is supposed to hear this, listen to this, study this video too. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please continue to bless the sister in Christ, Lord. Continue to bless the sister in Christ with greater knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and whatever it is that you predestined for her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. It's like, like even with that scripture, Matthew 7, 1, where it talks about judge not, lest ye be judged, right after that, and it's Jesus who said that, um, right after that, um, in verse 6, he says, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. Mm. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Um, and actually, when it says don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy, it it really, the Greek version says, don't give the sacred to dogs. So if we... <laughs> We're not to judge others, right? But if we're to distinguish who is a dog and who is a pig. Perfect example of where if we, if I run this new information through my mind, it changes my perspective. It removes the veil and now I know what, what I should do, which way to go, how to fix my way of thinking. But we'll continue it on the next video. Narcissism or talk about people who are toxic or harmful to others. There's some in the body of Christ who think that we're supposed to just treat everybody the same um, and just have, you know, see, almost have like rose colored glasses on where we think the best of everyone and we just see the best in everyone. Um, but the thing is like, even with that scripture, Matthew 7, 1, where it talks about judge not lest ye be judged, right after that, and it's Jesus who said that, um, right after that, um, in verse 6, he says, Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Um, and actually, when it says, Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy, it, it really, the Greek version says, Don't give the sacred to dogs. So if we <laughs> were not to judge others, right? But if we're to distinguish who is a dog and who is a pig um, versus who is someone who really values what we have to give, then we have to be able to discern and distinguish between people and what their motives are or um, how they're operating. We have to be able to recognize not everyone's the same. Some people are pigs. They're they're just going to trample what you that what you treasure most. If you give it to them, they're going to trample on it and then they're going to turn and attack you and destroy you. Some people Yep. See, but the most challenging thing and the hardest thing is like is when we understand this when father god reveals this to us it's like i i know how it is i know how it is i know how it feels i know how it is to be to have a closed mind to have a a, a, a mind of a rock right 
instead of a fleshy heart if an open mindset an open mind questioning stuff is this true is this not true uh, so that's why I tell y'all I know when I was my personality Alex right I was being a fake, a poser, a people pleaser, all of that. Through my journey, Father God has given me mana, puzzle pieces, new insights, new revelations. These are here. Uh, and these have opened my eyes. Just like this video, Father God, made, it was meant to be that on this day, what is it, Thursday, July 18th, I believe? Uh, I was meant to check out this video from the sister in Christ, discover this new uh, channel, and and I was supposed to run it through my mind because this is what I've been dealing with. This is what the, the what I've been, yeah, because I had rose-colored glasses and just because I know everyone does. There, everyone has potential. That's I guess that's what I see in people is that everyone has a potential to to be kind and to be good, right? to correct themselves to catch themselves whenever the jealousy comes in whenever hate whenever all these dark emotions catch yourself it's like if you're about to trip and fall you catch yourself before you trip and fall you feel it oh crap i'm about to trip and fall catch yourself wait let me correct myself let me stand up recenter myself so that i can walk right uh so it's very challenging because I understand where these people are coming from. I understand that they are in the dark. And so I, I'm, that's, why I'm, that's why I created the channel. Because I was doing what, what my sister in Christ is talking about here. I was just sharing it with everyone around me. With my family, with coworkers, with whatever, whoever was around me. But they were, they didn't, if you don't understand that this, this puzzle piece will transform your life that this if a pig doesn't understand that this pearl can give him a, a more stuff right more mud more food more everything for the rest of his life uh if he don't understand that it's just be like a pearl they're not gonna care about it they're gonna step on it they're gonna throw it away whatever right so that's why it's challenging for us as when you're on your walk as, as a Christian, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Uh, it's challenging. It's so challenging, right? But here, it confirms to me that I'm doing things, some things correctly, some things incorrectly. That's where I have to correct myself. That's why Father God gave me this video that I may run it through my mind continually as Father God to help me and remove these rose-colored glasses. Jesus name no more I, I repent Lord I, and this is how you correct yourself and then from now on so I haven't been an asshole to people to these individuals who have been overstepping my boundaries right uh, I am allowed to be shrewd Miguel you're allowed to be shrewd if you already know that the, some individuals that you met they, they got no good intentions then it's okay Miguel it's in the word of God. It's just like the uh, Jesus when he overturned the tables on the Pharisees. What he did not have bad intentions toward them. He did not. He was correcting them. He was rebuking them with love, with righteousness. Father God corrects us with righteousness. That is love right there. If I love my child and I see her, my child doing the wrong thing continually and tripping and falling, I as a father, I'm gonna be like, hey. This is how you walk. This is how you run. Let's let's train you like this. Look, and then I can show her, and I can do this. In the same sense, Father God is correcting us like this, and this is my purpose to use myself as an example for you all, and other connect with other brothers and sisters in Christ. For now, at least, just seeing their videos and then sharing them with you all. Uh, yeah, but let's let our sister continue here. Your do our dogs, they're just out to get whatever for themselves. They could care less about other people. Um, and so we don't want to take what is sacred and what is extremely valuable and give it to a dog, right? You don't, you don't take 
um, a six course meal and give it to a dog, right? You don't give something that is so valuable to someone who just can't, who's just going to trash all over it and can't appreciate it. Um, that's the point of this. But for us to be able, be able to even determine that in the first place, we have to have discernment. We have to be able to recognize not everyone's the same. Not everyone is going to be having your best interest at heart or really um, in it for the right reasons. Over and over again, we're told um, to just be aware that some people look like sheep and they're wolves. Um, so we are taught to have discernment about people. Yes, we're not to judge people, meaning we're not, we're not the judge. We're not the one who sits on the throne and says, you deserve this, you deserve that. We're not the one who's gonna judge what people are gonna get in the end. And that's for God to determine. But we are to discern that, you know, there's not everyone is, um, has the right motivations and that there are some people who are out to exploit others um, and to destroy others and that there's a difference um, and it's important to recognize the difference. Um, God himself doesn't treat everyone the same. It, here's an example of this. In Psalm 18 verse 25, it says, to the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you, you show yourself shrewd. Ooh, right there. So God doesn't treat um, the faith. All right, so there's a difference between being kind uh, to others, right? And then there's a difference between being used and being manipulated for your kindness by others, by the individuals around you, whomever they may be. It could be our children too, right? Uh, that's when some individuals will try to make you feel bad and be like, but this, this, and that. And that's when they're trying to flip it on you. And that's why I call emotional, psychological, Excuse me, manipulation. It's not what I call it. It's what I understand. That's what it is, right? I don't do that to people. For example, the, the individuals that I stayed away from that I closed my door to is because they've already shown me. And Father God gave me discernment. And this confirms that I am correct. So these individuals I stay away from. I set my boundaries because they don't know how to... How to... not overstep my boundaries right especially if it's happened more than a few, more than once the first time you tell someone hey I, I don't appreciate when you did that to me it's not because i'm weak it's because i just don't appreciate it this is who i am this is how i am someone tells me that all right cool my bad i didn't mean it like that or i did mean it like that but i won't do it again whichever way whatever it was right but yeah there's a difference between that uh, and you, someone, allowing resentment to well up within you, and I hate this individual, I just, ah, oh, this, right? That is not what I am doing. <laughs> I, I have no hate, I, I don't hold no resentments for snow. I just stay away from these individuals, because like I said, they have power issues, they, they just want to control people, Right? By people, I mean me and other people too. Uh, and all of that is the Saul spirit, the Pharisee spirits, all of these other spirits, right? But we'll let our sister continue. Faithful, the pure, those with integrity, the same as someone who is crooked. Um, you know, if someone's pure, God treats them with purity. Um, he's faithful to the faithful, right? Um, but to the crooked, he has to act differently. He has to show himself to be. For example, this verse, I didn't, I did not know it existed, right? So if I don't read the word of God, how am I going to be, how can God help me? How can my, our father help us if we don't read his word, his instructions? What? See, no matter what human being, where you are in the world right now, this applies to you. If 
you run it through your mind, if you start to study it, you'll be like, oh crap. This is the color red. It really is. Oh man. Now I understand what to do, right? This changes your whole perspective in your life. It's like, oh, okay, that's red, that's red, that's, that's not red. I used to think that was red. And now you know which way to go, how to, which way. Father God leads the way. He, this is how he orders our steps. The way that I've, for me at least, how I've discovered. Uh, yeah. You're shrewd. Um, meaning God is not going to just, um, God, God is aware when people are crooked. Um, God is aware of what's going on and he's not going to just gloss over it and act the same towards everybody. Um, it also says you rescue the humble, but you humiliate the proud. Um, so to the humble, he rescues them, but to the humble, he picks them up, but to the proud, he pulls them down. So, you know, all throughout the Bible, it's just God doesn't treat everyone the same, and he teaches us that we need to know that not everyone's the same, um, that there are sheep and some people who really are sheep and that there are wolves. Now there's a difference because the wolves are trying to devour the sheep um, and to harm them, to eat them, um, to take from them, to steal from them. And if we're not aware of that um, as people, as sheep, um, then we can make ourselves and put ourselves in a vulnerable position. And that's why this teaching in the church of how being a Christian is just all about being nice and being nice to everyone no matter what, and just giving and giving and giving. No, we need to have discernment. Um, we want to give to people who are Father who God value it and who we can truly help, help. But we don't want to give um, to someone who's just trying to manipulate and exploit us and just continue to give the best of what we have to someone like that who doesn't even care about it and who um, could care less about us um, and who would hurt us um, or try to harm us in the end. Um, I think I'm going to just do it in parts because then it's going to be too long. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But keep going. Keep informing yourselves. Keep surrendering to Father God's will. Set your will to the side. Because if it was my will, I would be doing completely different. I'd be arguing, fighting with people. I'd be lying, cheating, and killing just like everyone else. And I'd be playing the game the way that, that these dark individuals are playing the game. Right? But once more, that comes from ignorance. Not knowing. Uh and not asking, seeking, searching from Father God, right? But thank you all, I'll see you on the next video. Keep going, keep growing. God in his word gives us the keys to pass through the gate of rulership because this is a season of ruling and reigning. And the father told me, I'm gonna give you keys in this season for 5784 for the door that we are going through. It's not just for me. I can't keep it to myself. I have to share with my brothers and sisters and the other chosen ones because when we prophesy, we only prophesy in part, right? And I have a piece of the puzzle that will help the next man or woman of God, right? So I have to do my due diligence by sharing what the Lord gives somehow compensate for my lack of strength. I could prove it. My goal was to work myself relentlessly every day until I mastered something, and it worked. My counterpunch is the result. Oh. You're the greatest, but once you turn the hate for the time, when I show you what it's, what it's like to be catching it. puzzle pieces like you, you're the greatest, but once you turn the hate how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. A good human being, a fulfilled human being, doesn't need to break anyone down. All they do is want to build you up. So anybody you meet that calls you out of your name, that bullies you, that messes you up, that, that makes you feel not lifted, 
they are dealing with something deep rooted. When you quit, your mind says we're done. One mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do half the shit I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, run at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Stay hard. Being accepted is one thing that killed me. And you have to learn what do you want in your life?